Church family, my name is Beth Jones and I am excited to be able to dive into God's Word together. I've truly missed being able to join with children at the church, but I trust that God is using this time of separation to teach us things that we might have ignored during the busyness of our regular lives. Before we dive into scripture today, take a moment to pause this video and pray together with your family. We observe that after the Pharisees and most of the Jews refused to trust Jesus as their Messiah, Jesus began to speak to them in parables. By not explaining what the parables meant, Jesus hid the truth from those who had rejected the truth. This reality is illustrated by the parable of the four soils, also known as the parable of the sower. In it, Jesus declares that many will hear God's word, but few will accept it. Jesus' message is clear. Pay careful attention to what you hear so that God's truth is not hidden from you. When Jesus explained the parable to his true followers, he said the secret of the kingdom of God had been given to them. Those who hear, understand, and receive God's word will know what God's kingdom is all about. They will come to Jesus, know God, and receive eternal life. Entering God's kingdom depends on how you hear and respond to God's word. And you will know when you have rightly responded when you see lasting fruit in your life. This week, we will be talking through Lesson 10, Jesus Demonstrates His Authority. Our passage today is from Luke 8, 22 to 39, and our central truth is that Jesus is God. Let's read this passage, starting in Luke 8, 22. One day he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out, and as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in danger. And they went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and they marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this, that he commands even winds and water, and they obey him? Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped down on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house, but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons into the desert. Jesus then asked them, What is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter there. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with them. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. There are two key parts to our passage today. 
First, we see Christ's divine power over nature, divine love for the faithless, in verses 22 through 25. Then, we see Christ's divine power over the supernatural, divine love for the unclean, in verses 26 through 39. What does authority mean? Authority means being in charge or having the power to make others do what you say. In what ways does Jesus demonstrate his authority? Jesus shows his authority over nature by telling the storm to stop. Psalm 65 praises God for his power over all creation. Verse 7 specifically calls the Lord the only one who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the tumult of the peoples. Jesus then shows his authority over the supernatural by commanding the demons to leave the man. Psalm 110 tells of the Lord defeating all of his enemies, and Revelation 20 tells of the coming day when Christ will defeat Satan. Both of these are things that only God has the power to do. How did the disciples respond to Jesus calming the storm? Verse 25 of our passage says that the disciples were afraid and they marveled, saying to one another, who then is this that he commands even winds and water and they obey him? They knew that being able to stop a storm is something that only God can do. So they recognized that they were in the presence of God. How did the townspeople respond to Jesus casting out the demons? Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. That's from verse 37. The townspeople were afraid of Jesus because they knew he was very powerful. But instead of recognizing that Jesus is God, the townspeople decided that they would rather send him away and keep their lives the way they were. How did the man that Jesus healed respond to being set free from the demons. This man did what Jesus instructed. He returned to his city and told everyone what Jesus had done for him. He recognized that Jesus was God in human flesh, and he couldn't remain silent about what he had experienced. Jesus led the disciples across the Sea of Galilee into Gentile country. First, he led them into a storm so strong that it almost drowned them all. But despite the disciples' fear and doubt, Jesus calmed the storm. Second, Jesus and his disciples were threatened by a demon-possessed man. But again, Jesus commanded and brought peace. In both cases, those who observed his great power feared him. Most responded by rejecting him, but one man, the healed man, loved and obeyed him. These miracles prove that Jesus has the power and love of God. He has power over both the natural and the supernatural. As a result, he has power to bring peace, both physical and spiritual, and he has power both to save and to cleanse. He also showed his love by caring for his disciples, by healing the demon-possessed man, and by repeatedly offering salvation to the Gentiles. So all who wish to be saved must fear and love Jesus as the true God. So, how will you respond to what Jesus has done for you?